Roger, before we get started, let me just say from Ty Tribble and myself and the other leaders on our team how, how honored we are to be here with you. And I just want you to know that your, your team has been incredible, the kindness and the care that they've shown us in this process. And, and I, I just want you to know as we get started how honored we are to work with you and go into the future with you under your leadership in the Shackley Corporation. Well, Bo, we are excited to have your team join us. I met many of them today, and they are a fantastic group of people, and we feel privileged to be able to be your partner. Do me a favor and give people a sense of your background and those people in your life that have influenced you in your life and brought you to this place. Well, I've been very fortunate to have a number of mentors in my life, and while they're all very different, they've had one thing in common, and that is that they really have had a strong proven track record of helping many people. And one of my uh, mentors was my great uncle, who started off life as a salesman door to door selling clocks. And then somebody came to him and said, why don't you put your clock in our mail order catalog? And so he did that and he turned that into the number one mail order company in the UK. And then the products weren't being shipped fast enough, so he started a private delivery service and turned that into the number one private delivery service in the UK. And then people wanted credit and he gave people consumer credit and he turned it into the number one consumer credit. And he built many, many businesses. But one of the things that he liked the most is that he helped hundreds of people start their own businesses, some of which have become very big companies today. So he used business as a vehicle to help people achieve their dreams. And then I had my mother, uh, who is another one of my role models, who for the last 46 years has dedicated herself to public interest law and to giving the poorest families in this country equal access to the justice system. And about eight years ago or so, she was appointed by the President of the United States to oversee what's called the Legal Services Corporation of America and really offer people equal access on the national basis for these families. And she devoted her time again to help families live a better life. And then another one of my mentors is somebody who was president of the World Bank and the World Bank's role is to help countries, uh, particularly poor countries, uh, develop and provide the population with health and income and do it in a sustainable way. And so each of these people, whether it was helping people start and create their own businesses or helping families, uh, poor families live a better life or helping countries develop all try to make a world a better place and that is what was ingrained in me since I was a little boy which is to say where could I find a vehicle that could have a positive impact on people. How did you go through the process of first selecting this particular channel and then then the choice of the company that you chose within that channel? So for me the channel uh, is the ultimate in consumer product marketing because to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a customer is the holy grail of what all consumer product companies are trying to do. And the way that that's done is to give a referral from somebody who the customer knows and trusts. So working through people and choosing people to be our vehicle of distribution, not only is it more effective from a standpoint of marketing, but it also allows us to be a company that can make a change and an impact in helping people because people get rewarded economically for sharing their products. So Dr. Shackley, 55 years ago, had a choice. Do we go and sell these incredible natural health products through the traditional retail channel or try something which at this day was revolutionary and different? And Dr. Shackley chose to distribute the products through people. And again, because you get a double benefit. Not only did he think that you could tell a more compelling story and give a live testimony about the impact of the products and experience it, because he thought that the best form of advertisement was somebody who tried our products. But also, by allowing people to be the way through which we distribute these products, we give people the opportunity to earn money and create an economic future for themselves. And so that's that double benefit. So the channel itself is not only great from the standpoint of target marketing or having this one-on-one -on -one relationship with the customer, but it's also a way to make a positive impact on the people who are selling it. And so that's what I fell in love with the channel. And it allowed me to accomplish my goals of trying to make a big impact. Because if you can get enough people engaged in this, you can help literally millions of people live healthier and better lives. Uh, and then the question of why Shackley? 
Well, I had a team of people, uh, very smart, bright people who ran all the numbers and investments, and we came up with a list of criteria of what we wanted from an investment standpoint. And we wanted to be an investment that had growth potential in front of it, because that's how you succeed. And so, a couple of things. First of all, try to find a company that had an impeccable reputation, because I believe that one of the constraints in our industry is the reputation of the direct selling industry. And if you could find a company that could be attractive and real and substantive and never really overhype or overpromise and had a 50 year track record of proof that you can provide an income opportunity and a health benefit for people all over all those times, that the market potential would be much greater than a company that was just a sort of fly by night kind of company over promising and under delivering. Because I believe that reputation is one of the great limitations of why people don't join more into our business. And so there's only 13 million people in the direct selling industry, but there's 300 and something million people in the United States. And I think that every one of those people wants something that we have to offer, better health, the opportunity to create your own business, the opportunity to grow and experience the world. And if we could remove the constraint of reputation and show that it's real and substantive and tangible and evidence that it could last for generations, and we think we could grow the business a lot more. So reputation was important. Two, to be in growth sectors. So in my perspective, one of the great growth industries of the next 20, 30, 40 years is the health industry because we have to change our perception of what healthcare is. Healthcare can no longer be wait till you get sick and then we'll make you healthy. We can't afford that any longer. We have to keep people healthy so they don't get sick. That's a shift to prevention. And that shift is going to shift tens of billions of dollars uh, over the next few years into prevention side of the equation. And on top of that, there's people all over the world who want access to basic nutrition so they can improve. So the health and the natural health component of it is going to be growing significantly over the next number of years. That's a great place to be. And then demographically, you want to be positioned where the demographics are. So in the United States, for example, the baby boomers, the largest demographic cohort ever in the history of our planet is coming online. People want to stay younger. They want to feel younger. They want to look younger. They're fighting aging. And so anti-aging as a category within that is going to have a growth area. And of course, young people want to stay vital. And they look at this generation, and they want to age better and more, with more vitality and more youth than ever before. So that's an area. And then green. People care more and more about taking care of our planet. And they realize that the impact that what we have as a human species that we need to preserve and protect. So if you can be in the world of natural and chemical free and taking care of our planet at the same time, these are all growth characteristics. And then finally, there's a huge demand for income. Uh, around the world, in the United States today, you know, unemployment is extremely high and there's a huge demand for income and in developing countries people need a source of income as well and we can provide that as an opportunity so as you look at that uh, among all the companies that we saw Shackley was the only one that met all the criteria it pioneered the nutrition area it has a leading platform number one natural nutrition company in the United States so it had hundreds of millions of dollars invested in product development and research quality control, nearly 100 published uh, uh, clinical studies in peer-reviewed publications. So this incredible port portfolio, and yet it had so much growth in front of it. So I like to refer to it as a half a billion dollar startup because it had that history and that heritage, but it had all the growth in front of it that would allow people who join today to benefit from the growth in the future. You talk about integrity, and I know you recently gave a speech for the Direct Selling Association that, that you relayed what you thought could potentially be the leaders in network marketing. Would you elaborate on that for everybody? Well, I was uh, trying to paint a picture uh, and suggest to our industry that reputation is incredibly important. So I said, in my opinion, the three biggest companies in the direct selling industry 10, 20 years from now could well be Apple, Procter & Gamble, and Shackley. And I did that to try to make people think, if Apple decided tomorrow to go and become a direct selling company, I think millions of people would flock and want to be part of it. And the reason is, is that people would want to be associated with that kind of brand. And if you can have a company that is cool and, uh, and hip and, makes, uh, and, and has absolute integrity 
and people will want to be ambassadors of that company. They will want to represent that. And that's the picture that I think Shackley can play. We have this foundation of integrity of 55 years of doing great things to help people. Um, and that's something that I think people want to be part of. And now we're making it cooler and hipper and more relevant, and we're kind of going through this brand uh, turnaround of Shackley and making it hugely contemporary and relevant for what tomorrow's needs are. And so um, we really are one of the coolest companies I've ever seen in my life. And I think people will be attracted to that. And so with our reputation of integrity and the dynamic of what we are doing, um, I think we can also become a brand uh, that can attract the hundreds of millions of people who are not yet involved in the direct selling industry to be part of our company. I, I know that you signed the papers to purchase the Shackley Corporation at 3 or 4 o'clock one morning after a tremendous amount of due diligence, but you shared with us that even after all that work, there were th surprises to you. There's things you learned about this company that you did not know previously, and there were some exciting things. Would you share that with everyone? What's quite amazing is that the more you dig into Shackley, I think there are more things to fall in love with. So one of the things I didn't realize until after buying the company was that Shackley was the very first company in the world to be certified to offset its carbon emissions. I think that's really remarkable that this company um, took a leadership position and on issue of becoming climate neutral certified or carbon neutral uh, and became the very first company in the world. Didn't know that. Um, I also didn't know that uh, in, uh, when the astronauts re-enter orbit that they drink a drink called Astroaid, which is a rehydration drink uh, that Shackley has been formulating for the NASA space program for 15 years or so. And um, no one told me that. And it wasn't in any of the marketing materials. And I didn't realize as well that Shackley had nearly 100 um, medals, gold, silver, and bronze medal, that are won by people powered by Shackley products. So the company has this huge history of just doing the right thing and doing it quietly. Uh, and doing things that are leadership positions in the world. And so the only thing that we decided to change, we're going to continue to do the right thing, we're just going to talk about them because we should get credit for that. And these are the stories that people discover about Shackley when they dig deeper. And I think that's what is really part of the opportunity today. People want authenticity. They want integrity. They want it. And, and words, talking about it, is not sufficient for people today. People are too sophisticated. They've heard too much hype in their lives. So as they discover these milestones that are first in the world to be done, Dr. Shackley creating the first multivitamin in the world, developing the first protein isolate as a nutrition product, you know, doing the first company to offset our carbon emissions in the world. All these first are incredible proof points that this company is real, that it's an innovator, that it is ahead of the game, and that it sort of uh, lives up in its actions what most other companies simply talk about. When we talk about lifespans of companies, they go through different phases, some tremendous growth, some stagnant periods, and then they're revitalized. And I hear when you talk about this, you always, often reference Gucci and, and Burberry and, and Coach. Would you elaborate on that for people and explain to people what you mean by that? Sure. Again, it goes into the brand of Shackley, which is one of the story pioneers and a brand that's been around for 55 years. And in the fashion world, you had three uh, examples of old brands that stood for quality but weren't really relevant, that got re-energized and revivified in their life. So the first was Gucci. And Gucci is one of the old fashion brands. And in its day, it was cool and chic. And then it went through a period of time where it was kind of tired and old. And then it came into new management and new leadership and new vision for the company. And it transformed itself into one of the leading global luxury fashion brands. Um, and the same was true of Burberry, which is a hundred and something year old company, which went through a period of time of inventing the raincoat and being cutting edge, and then when it went through a period where it was tired and the customer base was old and the merchandise was old, but it always stood for quality, and over a 10-year period was able to transform itself into one of the global leading luxury fashion brands. And Coach, which was an old sort of leather goods company, again, is, is sort of a moderate price a global uh, uh, brand as well. And so these companies have created billions of dollars worth of new incremental value as they went through a phase of reinventing what was fundamentally a great brand and a great company that had 
no longer been relevant. And at Shackley, we're actually much more relevant today than Gucci or Burberry or Coach was when they began their renovation, but we think we can take it to new heights. And you take this company, which was a Fortune 500 company in 1983, and we are revivifying it and making it cool and hip because the idea of what we stand for is hugely relevant to what people want in today's world. And so that is going to drive our growth for the future. So in, in this day and age of technology, when we bring word of mouth advertising and we marry it with social networking like Facebook, and as a matter of fact, I know that you've trademarked the term social marketing, uh, and, and the relevance of Shackley fitting into that. Explain to everybody how you see Shackley I interfacing with, with social, network, social networking going forward. Sure. Facebook is one of the greatest gifts for our business uh, that we could ever have uh, for two reasons. First of all, what Facebook does is it takes the friction out of communicating with your friends. And so the communication and the scalability for people to tell their friends about something and communicate and talk about things is now on a scale unprecedented in human history. And so since our business pioneered the idea, our company, Shackley, pioneered the idea of rewarding people for sharing products that they love with their friends and family, it just increases the and expands the market opportunity as people's referrals can go viral much faster and at a greater scale than ever before. And the other thing that Facebook has done is that it has taught 500 million people what a network is. In other words, a network of friends. They call it social network. And it used to be the most difficult thing to explain to people. Imagine if you tried something that you were so passionate about that had an impact on your health, that made you feel differently, that you shared it with your friends. And then imagine if they shared it with theirs. And every time somebody did that, because we develop those customers through you, we're going to reward you and share a percentage of the sales that we receive through the customers that you generated. Now, people had a hard time imagining how big that can be. But today, if you go to somebody and you say, OK, look, the average person has 100 friends on Facebook. So if you tell your average friends, that's 100. If each of them tell 100 friends, that's 10,000 people. Suddenly, people can visualize how big it can be. And it gives them a tangible manifestation of developing a long-term business and being able to monetize that and being able to create something that can create generational wealth for, 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 for you and your family. I've heard you talk about the economy and, and efficiency and the, and the role that we play in people's security when you talk about Shackley in, in this economic climate. Um, how do you see Shackley fitting into that equation? I think Shackley has a tremendous responsibility in today's economy. And let's just talk about the United States of America for the time being. The challenge that we're having in the United States is that the economy is projected to grow between 2 and 3 percent, depending upon who you're talking to. And, and so that's the growth of the economy. But the problem is, is that productivity is projected to grow by basically the same amount. And what is productivity? It just means that companies are being more efficient, using computers or technology to do things instead of people. So if the economy is growing at the same rate as the productivity increases, it means that it's not leaving a lot of opportunity to create new jobs for people because all the growth is going to be absorbed by companies being more efficient. And so the opportunity for people is going to be zero. And right now, we have an enormous number of people who are unemployed. We have 16 million people or so that are out of work. And then you have this younger generation, Generation Y, which is the second largest demographic group after the baby boomers in our nation's history. And they're all entering the workforce. So you've got a lot of people out of the workforce unemployed. You've got a lot of people trying to get in. And the economy is just not growing enough to accommodate all the people and give them jobs. And the American dream, this country is founded on this idea of giving people an opportunity to create a better future for themselves and their family if they were willing to work hard enough for that. But if you're not creating jobs, you're not giving people that opportunity. And I think Shackley can step into that void and play a significant role and make a significant contribution by providing an economic opportunity for a million people. And that is a tremendously lofty goal for some people, but that's what our business is about. 
And by offering that to people without any real meaningful capital investment, uh, we have an important role to play. So we want to be the standard bearer of the American dream and give people the opportunity because people need to be participating in this. And it can't just be sort of companies doing well. What about the people? And that's the role that you, your team, and us, we can together give this. Uh, and that's never been needed more in our nation's history. Roger, when Ty and I started this process, um, we knew that, that once we found the right company, it would be obvious. But we started with a list of 60 companies on a spreadsheet, and we narrowed it down to 20, and from that we visited a number of co companies. But I just want you to know something, that, that that chair that's behind you is the one that I sat in and listened to you for two and a half hours one day. Um, and I just want you to know that the vision that you cast for the future of this co company is what made it so apparent and obvious to us. This was an obvious choice for us. And I just want to say to you from from our team, from the independent business people that, that are s stepping forward with high hopes and aspirations, I just want you to know that we're proud to partner with you, we're proud to be in business with you, and, and we're so honored to work with you in the vision that, that, that you are extending to all of us and the future of this wonderful corporation. And for that, I just want to say thank you from all of us. Well, thank you, Bo, and I think that your team should be grateful that you spent all that time and energy to try to find the right home for them. And I was just thinking, when you were describing your journey, it really almost literally is identical to the one that I did. I started with a group of 75 companies, and I looked over a five-year period, and I spent millions of dollars with my team looking and searching at different kinds of companies, and there was one at the end of the day, and that one was obvious. And it was Shackley because it was the only company that had this 55-year-old heritage, this platform, this huge foundation that also had tremendous growth potential in front of it. And so the difference between whether we double, triple, quadruple, or the growth in our business is there's no market condition. There's no limitation on how much we can grow from a market standpoint. The only difference is finding terrific partners in people. And I'm delighted to have partnered with you and your team. Uh, we look forward to working together to taking this vision and this idea of Shackley of truly delivering on a healthier and a better life and take it from the 1.2 million people that are now members of our Shackley family to 10 million people around the world. And when we do so, we will have the privilege together of creating the largest movement for positive social change in the world. And I think that's an exciting idea that people can rally behind. So thank you very much for choosing us, and we hope to be a wonderful partner to you and your team.